Oh my god, there is smelly fluid in my ear. No, not literally. Actually, you are now watching Doctors Go Live on Columbia Asia Facebook. And this happens to be the topic that we're going to be addressing today. Okay, there you are. Uh, we have with us today uh, consultant, ENT surgeon, consultant, ENT head and neck surgeon from Columbia Asia Hospital, Tebrau, Dr. Hoven Arul Arumugam. Hi, doctor. Hello. Um, Hi, How good. do you like my easy intro just now? Oh, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> because there's OMG there, so I thought, you know, I might as well just, oh. just yeah, get in the right mode. Okay, so anyway, today we'll be, we're going to be talking about um, ears that sometimes you, you tend to feel something trickling out and you think maybe it's water. So could it be just water or could it be something that is uh, that should be of concern? Um, we're not talking about water stuck in the ears because you've just gone swimming or if you have just uh, taken a shower and shampoo got in your ears. Not that sort of water. This is actually something that can be very serious. So uh, let's have um, Dr. Poovan talk about this. Uh, first of all, maybe Dr. Poovan, you can explain about the anatomy of the ear. Ah, sure. That, that is a very good uh, way we can uh, actually... Uh, introduce ear to everybody. I, I know a lot of us, uh, ENT perhaps, uh, they like to talk about nose. So I've noticed, you know, everybody talking about nose, sinuses and all that. Uh, rarely people uh, actually talk about um, what you call ears, right? So yeah. uh, my special interest uh, is hold on now. It's okay. No problem. We've been there. Sorry. Uh, I just uh, received a phone call. Okay. okay. Now, uh, so uh, most of us, uh, we don't really talk about ears, but my special interest in ears. So uh, basically today, I given a good opportunity to actually share mm -hmm. some knowledge and uh, some yeah. things about ears now, right? So let's yeah. just jump into uh, the uh, ears. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, I'll just put my slide over here. Okay. Uh, can you all see my slides? Right. Um, this is only the... The cover. Okay, uh, now we see it. Yes. Okay. That's yeah, anatomy and physiology. Okay, so basically uh, our ears are divided into three uh, main areas, uh, which mm. you can see there in the picture. This is the external yeah. ear uh, yeah. until the tympanic membrane. Then the middle ear, uh, which consists of a few uh, smallest bone in our body, la, ossicles. We mention it as ossicles. And also the inner ear, which is the uh, membranous and bony structures, uh, which is cochlea and some nerves are there. Okay, maybe you can switch to um, my here. Uh, can you guys see this? Oh, nice. Uh, Sakina, yeah, this is my favorite model. Okay, I just want to show it to you. So this is the uh, eustachian tube, which actually goes into the middle ear. Okay, so this is the middle ear, right? And this is the external ear. So the sound yeah. actually comes from the external ear and it focus goes into the tympanic membrane here. So the tympanic membrane vibrates mm -hmm. and actually goes to the middle ear uh, via these uh, ossicles. Ossicles are the bone. So the bone uh, will transmit the sound into the mm -hmm. cochlea. So if you look at it, this is the cochlea. And uh, the cochlea uh, will transmit the sound, will change the mm -hmm. sound into electrical yeah. pulse and it will go through the nerves to your brain okay so uh, basically so as i said earlier so the ear are divided into three external ear the middle ear and uh, inner ear so if there's any discharge coming up from yeah. the uh, external ear could be external ear related problem or could be coming from the middle ear so mostly the discharge is either from the middle ear or in the uh, external ear so the external ear is usually lined by our skin. You know, the skin, you know, yeah. our skin has, is, a, is called as characterized squamous epithelium. And right. the middle ear is lined by a different, totally different epithelium as compared mm. to uh, the external ear. So why am I telling this? Because uh, maybe the some of the last of the end of the slide, there's certain diseases where you can find this uh, epithelium in the middle ear. Okay. So uh, generally, yeah, uh, I think... That's about the anatomy and physiology of the ear. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. The the familiar part is like in school, you know, the thing that you learn about is gegendang, and then of yeah, gegendang is actually the eardrum lah. Eardrum. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is eardrum. 
Yeah, in Chinese okay. they call it ermo in Mandarin ermo. Uh. That's also to do with drums and gendang and all that. Gendang, yeah. <laughs> it's a very thin layer. Uh, the sound actually vibrates there, so that's how the sound being conducted uh, via the ossicles uh, through yeah. uh, middle ear. Mm. Okay, all right. Okay. Now that we've taken a look at the anatomy of the ear, uh, perhaps we can dive right into the topic of today, which is liquid that comes out of the ears. And I believe that you've got some uh, descriptions of the kind of texture or the, the sort of liquid that actually has, has, um, has been found from the inner ear. Okay, so um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, as uh, I, the, the anatomy and physiology was very brief because uh, I don't want to go detail into it. Yeah, yeah. Everybody can get confused. So uh, the pathology itself uh, can be further divided into uh, three areas, as I mentioned earlier mm -hmm. as well. External okay. ear pathology or middle ear pathology and in fact, uh, yeah. the inner ear are also possible. But if we are looking into ear discharge, mostly mm -hmm. the... Uh, the disease or the pathology lies at the external ear commonly and also okay. the uh, middle ear. Now, okay, one of the... Uh, yeah. Sorry to interrupt you, but maybe we can... Uh, can you describe exactly what pathology means? Yeah, okay. So, that's in my first slide here. Uh, mm -hmm. If you see in external ear, uh, these are the common uh, pathology. So, you say, suppose you go for swimming or perhaps, uh, you know, uh, uh, a brief uh, diving episodes and all that. So uh, yeah. what that will happen will be some uh, bacterial infection over the external ear canal. As I mentioned earlier, the external ear canal is lined by uh, this uh, squamous epithelium, right? So the infection can be easily um, going into this uh, epithelium and cause uh, pain uh, and yeah. pruritus. Pruritus means itchiness of the ear. And eventually, you sometimes if you don't treat it or sometimes when you take a cotton bud and just try to, you know, a metal in your ear and all that is where the infection worsens, right? So in a severe stage, uh, what will happen, the whole uh, ear canal uh, or the ear meters, external ear meters will be obstructed. And this is very painful at times, okay? And of course, you get a bit of uh, discharge uh, coming out. It's, uh, sometimes it's a uh, pus uh, type, you know, the yellowish color. And uh, sometimes it's very painful when you touch the tragus. Now, tragus is a structure in the ear whereby there's like a small ear uh, over yeah. the uh, interior part of the ear. So when you really touch it, you feel, oh my God, it's so painful. Um, so this is uh, this is one of the signs of uh, acute otitis externa, right? Okay. So uh, secondly, of course, uh, as I mentioned earlier, so this epithelium in the external ear, uh, it has pillow uh, sebaceous unit. Pillow sebaceous meaning, uh, unit means uh, it has sweat glands, follicles. Okay. So all these things may get entrapped or being blocked. So when it is blocked, what will happen? There's a bacterial growth below the hair follicle. So this is a different scenario as compared to the first uh, disease I mentioned, acute otitis externa. This is the follicle itself will get infected. Sometimes you can see actually pus coming out from these follicles. Mm -hmm. right? uh, it is something like, you know, the Malay say, uh, bisul, you know, in bisul in the. Oh, yeah. right. Boil. Uh, like yeah. So, yeah, mm -hmm. boil. So, for a certain extent, uh, maybe perhaps three to five days will be very painful. Once it's ruptures, the pain is really reduced. Now, once it's ruptures, that's where you can see a lot of smelly discharge actually coming out from the ear, right? Yeah. Uh, mostly, this type of situation can be easily treated with maybe uh, oral antibiotics, you know. Mm -hmm. And common organism that we always see is the Staphylococcus aureus, yeah. And mm -hmm. um, this condition will be sometimes very painful as well. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, doctor, when you so, say uh, painful for each of these conditions, is the pain mm -hmm. uh, the same throughout, or just different sort of uh, pain? Maybe you can describe the the pain. Yeah. Okay, in otitis externa, as I mentioned earlier, so it, it will rather be more priorities, then you're going to get uh, a bit of pain after that and towards the end will be very painful, uh, towards three to five days. But furonchalosis, you will have, starting inside, you will have pain, right? So, and the pain will be more intense than the otitis externa. Then when, yeah. when, the, when the boil actually ruptures, the furonchalosis ruptures, yeah you will feel slight relief or pain. So at the moment where you, you, you feel that something is coming out from the ear, perhaps the yeah. pus, so, so you will feel the pain actually uh, is better. Yeah. 
But those okay. who are immunocompromised, like diabetics and all that, you have to be very careful yeah. because this infection will flare, will become, will go into the blood supply and all that, and causing mm. other related problems like you know swelling of the yeah. pina, ear pina. You know, okay. sometimes I, I do receive cases with simple frontalis, facial edema. With you know the face one side will be crooked, with facial yeah. asymmetry, and all that. so these are immunocompromised people. Those who are like diabetes. Or those who have uh, all those uh, SLE uh, connective tissue diseases and all that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, among the elderly as well and children because their immunity, their immunity system is is not solid. Like so, yeah. So the when, when the immunity system is actually low and and mm -hmm. uh, and somehow rather the organism which actually grows for this type of pro uh, problems mm -hmm. yeah. is not a common organism that we always see. So it's going to be a very uh, high. Uh, Called uh, resistant organism, which is quite right. fulminant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. So maybe I go to the next slide. Yeah. So so we have actually uh, noted as two condition: the otitis externa, another one is a furunculosis, just a boil in the ear. Okay. This is okay. Uh, I think uh, this is another condition which I like to highlight. Pretty interesting. Uh, in my clinic, what I'll do, uh, I will scope mm -hmm. the patient. I have. Endoscopes. Uh, we do an auto endoscopic examination. Then I will show. Yep. So if you look at the yep. picture here, these are beautiful yep. gardens in our ear. Huh? If you look at it, uh, but although know, it's beautiful, but it's very painful. Okay, and and if you can see, there's a spores. Huh? It's a blackish yeah. spores, and there's another one, beautiful white. Uh, what we we describe as white wet blanket in the ear. So uh, okay. these two pathologies. Different, different organism. It's a fungal infection in the ear. Okay, yeah. mostly happens there is a chronic discharging of the ear, All right, and yeah, and also moldy. Pardon? I was just gonna say that it looks very moldy, especially the one at the bottom, the the white yeah, white black. Yeah, moldy. Right, right. Yeah, see, because of humidity, high humidity. Uh, oh, through I my experience, I notice uh, because these are patient tend to jump one doctor to another doctor. To, yeah. uh, one GP to another GP. So what what they do is sometimes they do stringing, and sometimes they will start some uh, auto uh, topical uh, antibiotics uh, yeah. which has steroid in it. So this will yeah. exaggerate the growth of fungal, huh? and of course with the antibiotic it will kill the bacteria, the normal bacteria in our ear. Then this will cause a uh, lot of fungal infection. So uh, this these are things uh, will happen. You know when you actually jump doctor to uh, another doctor, which you know sometimes they don't know the diagnosis what is actually mm. happening yeah uh, would you say that this is one of the most common um uh, ear conditions yeah this is quite common uh quite common among immigrants uh, i don't know what's the oh. reason but mostly yeah. the immigrants will uh, i think because they they don't come to specialists early i guess so so then then yeah. some of their working environment is very high humidity and all that and their yeah. hygiene is a bit uh, low comparatively, lah. So, so sometimes a lot of patients will have this automycosis. Having said that, uh, diabetic patients as well will get uh, this type right. of problem. And too much of usage of antibiotics will also uh, will lead to this problem. Yeah, the okay. black one is actually uh, the organism, the fungal. We call it as Aspergillus niger, uh, and yeah. the white one is Candida albicans. Uh, you know. Okay. So if you see oh, the I onion. But it wouldn't be in the ear, though. I mean, that's that's a uh, that's very common gynecological kind of. Yeah, yes. I was just going to that. This candida is very yeah. common. Uh, yeah, but somehow or rather we can actually look. Uh, candida can be seen everywhere. Maybe in our oh, house, in our kitchen. Yeah, I was just coming to that. The onions. Yeah. You know, when, when you peel the onions, you can see that small black layer on top. Uh, yeah. That is actually yeah. Aspergillus niger, actually. Yeah. So oh, you say something you peel the onion and put in the ears and all that, so it might transmit some fungal uh, into the ear. Okay. So uh, that's about automycosis. Automycosis, what we are supposed to do is basically do a gentle ear suctioning. Uh, mm. Then we just sometimes we will put some uh, medication directly. I like to put medication directly. So because okay. the pain will reduce immediately. Uh, secondly, yeah. uh, it will actually uh, the, the 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 healing. Uh, I mean, the mm. antifungal property of uh, using uh, local uh, is better yeah. compared to the one that ear drops. But ear drops sometimes you get some allergic reaction to the ear drop. Some patient will mm. have a bit of burning 
information. So mostly what I'll do, I'll put, I'll put a local uh, antifungal directly to the ear, right? Yeah. So, uh, doctor, when you say it's about dampness in the ears, but we're not talking about the you know normal dampness that you get you know, when you come out or when you come out of the shower and you don't dry your ears properly because I guess that can happen a lot. No, usually our ears will dry automatically um, with, with our Sorry, body heat. Again? Uh, usually our our ears will dry automatically with our uh, body heat wow, okay. right so we do not require to put a ear bud or you know whatever yeah. <laughs> instruments yeah. into the ear it's, it's strongly uh, uh, i mean not encouraged <laughs> to put cotton bud yeah. into the ears you know some people actually you know that instrument that metal instrument that um, sometimes when you go for facials i'm not yeah. sure if you yeah so I, I, I got it yeah, actually this one yeah this is the can you can you all see yeah, uh, this is the better. It just, it just costs uh, you one ringgit. Focus on. There you go. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That is the thing. Yeah. Isn't that dangerous for an ordinary person to try in, and remove anything from the ear canal? Yeah, it's very, very dangerous. Yeah. In fact, uh, because we don't know what we are actually digging, <laughs> and some people, as I mentioned earlier, the ear canal uh, it could be short could be longer so you'll be short you're going to be a bit disastrous when you just you know poke it inside direct to the eardrum you know uh, i've also received a lot of cases where mothers uh, use these sort of things into the kids uh, ear try to remove their wax you know, pull it out and yeah. all that so uh, we don't encourage people to use this uh, and, and we don't know uh, what type of bacteria actually lying there you know whenever you touch it through the ear canal so the bacteria from here will actually spread into the external ear causing uh, orthitis externa, which I was mentioned earlier. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, another question. When you get any one of these conditions, would that mean it's, uh, can it go to the other ear or you get it both at once? Okay. Like, like automycosis, uh, perhaps you can get it the other ear. Um, say, suppose you, the other ear has the same discharge or whatsoever, yeah. uh, then you can actually transmit the other side. So uh, it's good to really take care of the ear. Uh, not yeah. to introduce the cotton bud, you know, the same one over the other year as well. <laughs> okay. okay, all right. But you want to say, if you ask uh, any yeah. of the ENPs uh, around, um, they don't really encourage you to even use a cotton bud into the ears. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Like mm. uh, but if you are sleeping next to someone who has this, would you contract this uh, condition? Uh, no problem. Uh, no. That, that, that's uh, that never, yeah. never at all. <laughs> okay. Okay, can I just go to the next slide? Please do. Okay, so uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the organism uh, is, uh, you know, sometimes in automycosis. Huh? Uh, sorry, where was I? Okay, yeah, the Aspergillus nigus and Candida. Okay, so next slide will be malignant otitis eczema. Okay, this is a condition which is uh, rarely happens, but it happens with those with diabetic and immunocompromised people, right? So, uh, what happens is actually uh, there'll be an uh, infection. Uh, this is what we call Pseudomonas aeruginosa infection, uh, which okay. goes into the external ear and it okay. will start eroding the uh, bone surrounding the external ear and also uh, it actually uh, enters into the uh, what it call uh, to almost at the uh, brain level, the lower dura or the skull, base skull. Yeah. So uh, there are at times this infection will actually mm. cross over to the other side of the ear. Mm. So this condition we call it malignant or tessiestina. The word malignant is a cancer. Uh, it is the character yeah. of tessiestina, which is yeah. uh, like cancer-like uh, kind of uh, problem. Now, if you look at the picture here, so most of the time uh, when we do autoendoscopic examination, yeah, you will find much. some sort of granulation tissue, like you know, a bit reddish. Mm. Uh, uh, it's, we call it yeah. as a granulation, sometimes it's a polyp in the ear. And this yeah. time, patient with a very cruciating kind of a pain. It's a severe pain. And if mm -hmm. you look at it, they will definitely uh, have a background uh, background diseases like diabetes, poorly controlled, SLE yeah. or other immunocompromised yeah. problems. So in this type of situation also, you will get some kind of discharge from the ear. And most of the yeah. times, uh, if you are late to see a doctor, you will end up with facial nerve uh, palsy. Facial nerve palsy basically means that you know, your your face is asymmetry uh, one side, uh, then you, you'll be crooked lah 
one side. Huh? Yeah. So this is maybe a cardinal important sign to say, oh, you are really suffering from malignant otitis eczema. Mm-hmm. So you have pain, facial asymmetry. Sometimes you have a bloody or you know yellowish discharge from the ear, and so. And 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 uh, there are those days. What we will do is we'll do a surgery for them. But nowadays, with the of antibiotics, uh, the 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 death rate of this problem have actually reduced, and we can actually uh, treat this patient without any surgery, perhaps with antibiotics uh, for at least uh, six months uh, duration. Sometimes we go up to twelve months if the disease actually cross yeah. over to the other side of the year. Right. Okay. Compared to the other three conditions that you mentioned before, would this be the more serious one? Because you know, Scott, yeah. you would like. So this is a very serious problem, uh, which okay. can happen when you have discharging here. Uh, but as I mentioned earlier, it is quite rare. And it is among uh, those who are immunocompromised uh, patient, and the right. death rate uh, in this type of problem is very high. You know, because I've seen a lot of them who came in late. And they end up with uh, you know uh, a lot of brain abscesses. Sometimes they end up with meningitis, you know, inflammation, yeah. uh, the dura of the brain, and all that. Right. Meningitis is very serious. Death rate. Oh. Okay, doctor. Not what am I looking at? It's the death rate here. Essentially yeah, death rate. rate. Yeah, because uh, it's usually the death rate was higher, right? Uh, compared to nowadays, nowadays for the past five years, uh, we actually changed the modality of treatment. Uh, those days, what we do, we do a surgery, uh, we do a modified radical mastectomy, we do a post auricular incision uh, behind the ear incision, then we have to you know drill all the way uh, until we remove all the pathology in the uh, mastoid region. Uh, then you give a bit of energy. But nowadays, a uh, lot of research being done and a lot of literature review says that without mm. the surgery, with the antibiotics, you know, a long stay antibiotics will actually yeah. improve death rates. You know, uh, death rate, as I have mentioned earlier, they will end up with complications of this malignant otitis uh, externa, mm. uh, such yeah. as brain abscesses, meningitis. And we are looking at people with diabetic, which has their immune system are not strong, you know, so they can uh, easily end up with uh, problems. Okay. All right. So the next one would be uh, otitis, uh, what do you call middle ear problems. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, I've already covered most of the common problems in the external ear, otitis yeah. external, the uh, furunculosis in the ear, the otomycosis fungal infection in the ear, and the worst extent, the malignant uh, problem in the ear, which yeah. is malignant otitis external. Now let us just look into the middle ear. See, so middle ear, as I was uh, showing the picture just now, there is a eustachian tube. There is a tube uh, actually from the nose going to the ears, right? So yeah. the middle ear. So this eustachian tube, okay, uh, it's to balance the pressure between the middle ear and also the uh, outside environment. Say, suppose yeah. you are going flight, right? So say you are actually descend from the flight. If you have eustachian tube problem, you experience ear pain. Okay, yeah, because you exactly. equalize the pressure. Sometimes when you go down, you actually require to swallow a saliva or take a bit of chewing gum. Yeah. Then you equalize the pressure, right? So now, when yeah. there is certain instances where there is a problem with the eustachian tube, or there is a spread of infection, say suppose from the tonsils or from your sinuses, or perhaps mm-hmm. you have allergy, right? Or perhaps in the tumor in the, in the, in the nasopharynx, right? Or in the nose, yeah. okay? Will actually uh, hinder this mechanism of uh, uh, pressure uh, equilibrium. So, and also uh, the infection from the eustachian tube will eventually spread to the middle ear. So, when it goes to the middle ear, what happens is inflammation of the middle ear. So, that's where you can see a lot of pus being accumulated in the uh, middle ear. So, I'm going to show you one picture. This is what will happen when the early stage. This is a picture of the uh, eardrum. Okay, so yeah. this is. Uh, in, uh, what you call um, infection, hyperemic, it looks rather uh, red. You see, you can see the vessels are very prominent. Okay, yeah. this is where the patient will experience uh, slight pain, right? Okay. Subsequently, what ah, look at the eardrum, it looks bulging. Yeah. Yeah. The bulging that there's so much of suppuration, so much of pus in the middle ear. Where yeah. can it come out? 
administration tube is closed. So no way it's going to come out of the administration tube. So the only way it can come out is from the uh, eardrum because the eardrum yeah. is the yeah. thinness of all the middle structure. So what will happen? It will rupture like that. Yeah. So that's where the perforation happens. So that's where the ear pus actually comes out from the ear. Okay, so yeah. most of the time, the first extent, the second extent, patient will have pain. But eventually, yeah. after the discharge, the pain will go away. But then you will have the ear perforation, ear hole yeah. huh? in the ear. Yeah. So most of the time, what we will do, uh, if uh, we will treat with oral antibiotics and a bit of autotopical ear drops for this type of condition. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, basically, this is quite common uh, among yeah. pediatric population because if you can oh, see, okay. uh, yeah, it's very common pediatric. Uh, we see a lot of cases like that uh, because yeah. they are using tube is rather uh, it's it's not uh, it's not okay mostly eustachian tube is in a slightly vertical position and uh, and it is uh, smaller in pediatric it is more vertical bigger so the infection can easily cross over uh, in pediatric yeah. uh, doctor when the patients so, bring any of these um, conditions would they be able to hear or the yeah. hearing yeah, if you, if you can notice, uh, as I uh, was telling you, the sound actually uh, will go to the eardrum, then there will be a vibration of the eardrum, then it will be transmitted into the ossicles, the bone, the smallest bone. Yeah. Now, when you have us in the middle ear, so this vibration will be, uh, would be there. So it can't really vibrate much. So there's okay. no, not much vibration. So mostly, uh, most of the patients will experience conductive hearing loss. Conductive hearing that you know you how you experience yourself. Say suppose you close your ears, you know you put a you know just close your ears, you feel like yeah. you are talking, you Close know, it. like something is vibrating in your head. Yeah. You know, so you feel like that. Uh, whenever you experience this. Okay, let's take a look at the okay. next slide. Yeah, the next slide will be okay. Say suppose this problem is not treated. Okay, it is just left uh, like that. Okay, so suppose yeah. uh, the discharge uh, have uh, recovered. Okay, it reco mm -hmm. recovered by itself. All patients would have uh, seen a general practitioner. They would have given antibiotics mm -hmm. and problem solved. Okay, but then the ear perforation will persist. Am I right or not? So now, when there's a ear perforation, the, the, the proper care must be taken, uh, especially when you go swimming. You know. And uh, especially when there's any water enters into the middle ear, you'll get right. a discharge. So this condition is we call as chronic suppurative otitis media, right? Yes. Chronic suppurative otitis media is whereby there's a perforation and uh, there's a more than three months duration. So you'll have this chronic suppurative otitis media. Uh, for education purposes, chronic otitis media, basically we can actually divide it into two. The one I mentioned earlier, which is we call as tubotympanic type. Tubotympanic basically perforation uh, in the eardrum and, and, and yeah. there's a yeah. previous infection actually. This is considered a safe type, okay, which is uh, not very harmful. Uh, but the other type, which is the eticoentral type, which I'm going to show in the other next slide here. So this slide here, this is tubotympanic type. You can see perforation. Okay, oh but this is what I am telling about. This is the unsafe type of uh, ear problem. So you get this atic perforation on top mm -hmm. of the ear, you no know? ear attic region. Mm -hmm. So you have whitish keratin flakes. So as yeah. I mentioned in the me just now, our ears, the external ear, is lined by keratinized squamous epithelium. So this squamous yeah. epithelium will imaginate into the middle ear, and this this keratin. The skin actually. So this keratin, what it does, it will actually erode the bone and cause uh, erosion and sometimes can cause uh, more problems uh, into the uh, labyrinthine structures and sometimes this type of patient will experience vertigo, spinning sensation oh, yeah. and so complicated with, as I, uh, this one, uh, complicated with uh, meningitis, infection yeah. in the brain, brain abscesses, or sometimes neck swelling also, right? So this is a very dangerous situation where uh, yeah. you have to be very careful. Now, comparatively between these two, the tuber tympanic type 
uh, and also the ethical enteral tab, or also called as cholesterol, uh, the, the discharge in tubal tympanic will be profuse uh, compared to ethical enteral. Ethical enteral yeah. disease or cholesterol, uh, it is more scanty, very little discharge, and it's very, very smelly. Yeah, so this is how you differentiate between these two uh, diseases. Okay, this okay. is to show okay. that. Sorry, uh, um, you mentioned that it would erode uh, the bones. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, are you referring to the three bones that's in the inner ear? Okay. Yeah. Let me just go back to my uh, slide here, uh, my model here. Okay. okay. So now, if you look at it, now the infection basically it's from here, this is the middle yeah. ear, okay? Right. Now, there's a bones here, okay? So this bone mm. will be eroded, okay? Now, after oh. that, this is the labyrinthine structure, as I mentioned earlier. It is membranous and bony. So this part will also be eroded. Not only that, the adjacent bones around here, see all this bone. This yeah. is what we call a temporal bone. These bones will yeah. be eroded as well. Because you see this, uh, uh, the colostoma or ethicoenteral disease is also called skin in the wrong place. So this skin here will be here and there will be a lot of keratin here and you will try to expand itself in a small cavity. So that's why there's erosion and sometimes it goes into the brain. So that is where uh, the, the, the unsafe part, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. So, yeah, so th that's to highlight you guys about uh, this type of condition. Lah. Okay, this is one of my patients as well. Now, if you look at the picture here, uh, he, this guy has a perforation, okay, mm -hmm. and there's a pass up there. So, this is a simple uh, tympanic type of discharge, all right? So, uh, yeah. he actually, uh, he already had perforation, but he is unaware of the perforation, so he went swimming. So, uh, in Desaro, something like that. So, uh, then what happened uh, after three days? Then he had this uh, discharge all around uh, the, mm. from the middle ear and also the external ear. Right? Mm. So uh, then, of course, the other disease I was mentioning, the ethic colostoma, the ear looks like this, right? The eardrum, yeah. these are the lower part is eardrum, but you have perforation rather than here, you get it at the attic region, at the attic mm. region of the uh, ear. Why is it attic region? Because the attic region of the eardrum is the weakest yes. point of the eardrum. So the epithelium will invaginate into uh, into the middle ear via this yes. attic region. So most of most of most of the time, this patient, all this patient will have nose problem. Okay, nose problem meaning that uh, they have eustachian problem where there's a yes. negative pressure in the middle ear. So this colostoma is this. Uh, what you call the epithelium will actually imagine it to this because of this negative pressure into the middle ear. Right. Yeah. yeah. All right. So any any anything that you want to highlight? Anything you want to point out, uh, Sakina? Oh, that's that's the last uh, of the slides, yeah. 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 I got another one where where another last slide uh, will oh, okay. be. In, uh, oh, treatment. Okay. Before, before we go yeah. into the treatment uh, area, maybe we can just reflect a little bit on what you said earlier. Uh, okay. Out right. of all. This is um, the most common. I mean, now we're looking at it um, bird's eye view generally. Out of all okay. of this, this is the most yeah. common. A lot of patients have this problem. Common one is the one uh, otitis externa. Okay, okay, the one I told you the very first slide. Okay, so okay. you have to for that. Okay, basically, it's hygiene. You know, nowadays, generation, they like to hear music and all that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> uh, by using ear uh, phone, uh, ear phone, mm. the one, but okay, that is one of the potential causes. Uh, oh, but yeah. uh, I would say because you know you, you don't really take a good care of the ear part, you know the ear phone, yeah. Uh, yeah. because it's very dirty. Sometimes you can see down on the floor. Mm. <laughs> the, oh, yeah, know, yeah, 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 yeah. Sometimes you share it with people. Yeah, and sharing. Yeah, people do share ear phone. Yeah. Know, then, then, so we don't know what type of infection that guy has, is, and you take mm -hmm. it and just go in. So this is yeah. all, and and prolong use. Now, I always say, um, you know, we want to use earphone or ear, uh, ear kind of earbud kind of a earphone. Yeah. 
try not to use more than 60 minutes, right? So if you use more than 60 minutes, uh, it's going to damage your ear. Uh, not only that, it's going to put some compression around the external ear and introduce a lot of infection into the external yeah. ear. Are you referring to the one, um, I mean, the butt type of headphones, which goes right into the, the ear canal somewhat. Yeah. Um, yeah. And there's also the common type, which goes right over your, it's just here and it's like two cushions and it doesn't, uh, it's not invasive. It doesn't. You don't put anything. There's, there's no insertion. It's just outside like that. Ah, uh, yeah, the vibrator type, oh, is it? The cool. vibrator type. Uh, that is fine. Oh, that is fine. Oh, that's okay. Ah, uh, that is okay. But then you have to uh, watch out also because any uh, earphones, they have whatever device you are using, they always have this volume set limits. All right, right. and and they will actually uh, will uh, will actually uh, warn you. You are going above the limit. So most of the time it's right. 60 dB, 60 to 85 dB, right, if I'm not mistaken. So when there is a warning, don't go above it. Yeah, when you go above it, more than 60 minutes, that's where your ears mm. are being damaged. Yeah. Okay. I, I think um, part of the problem, I, I think like, this is my uh, opinion because a lot of people, even myself, I'm guilty. Yeah. When I use um, headphones, you don't think that it's going to damage your ears in any way because you, you keep increasing the volume and it does sound like it's okay. It doesn't, it doesn't hurt. It may be a little loud, but I guess that's the way you hear certain types of music, loud. Yeah. Um, perhaps, yeah, but, but this is the thing that's going to be creating the problems, right? Because you're oblivious or maybe yeah. you're ignorant about the kinds of things yeah, that you're doing. Uh, back to your question again. So by using this, so that's why commonly you get this otitis externa mostly. Yeah? Yeah. So uh, and of course, uh, if you have, you know, recently you have running nose and yeah. uh, rhinitis or sinusitis. Yeah. Uh, so this type of patient will end up with the other problem which I, I showed you earlier. So this yeah. slide, uh, superative uh, kind of discharge, and uh, as I mentioned, yeah. it's the pediatric population will have a high tendency. To get this yeah, problem. It, painful, eh? it does look very painful actually. Yeah. For children. I mean adults yeah. of course, but the threshold could be very much. Yeah, painful. children are very painful. Uh, even toddlers, yeah. they keep on crying. They have sometimes yeah. they have high grade fever. Uh, mm. sometimes we require addition, we have to use a bit of antibiotics, nasal decongestion, uh, ear drops, uh, and yeah. also energy reduce uh, pain. Okay, okay. All right, doctor, before uh, we, we wrap up today's session, um, maybe you can give us like some advice um, given the lifestyle that we have today. For example, you mentioned just now using headphones. So that was very good advice. Um, try to take care of the hygiene of the device that you're using. Uh, any other advice that you would like to share with us regarding the health of ears? Okay, uh, basically, uh, personal hygiene uh, is important. As I was mentioning earlier, the immigrants, uh, they tend to get a lot of otomycosis, fungal infection in the ear. Reason being, they are hygienically, they are not really taking care of themselves. Perhaps I'm not sure whether they are overwork and all that. So your ear care, basically, never ever use uh, the instrument I mentioned to you uh, to actually fix your ears. Uh, don't yeah. use cotton uh, basically, after you take your bath, you can just uh, use a tissue uh, in your finger and just uh, wipe it over the externally. Our ears has the normal mechanism whereby it actually pushes the, uh, whatever uh, dirt, you know, ear wax outward. You know, when you talk, when you yawn, uh, or perhaps when you eat something, right? So there's a movement in the external ear, so it actually pushes it out. So don't use this ear bath instruments into the ear. Okay, that's number one. Yeah, a lot of lot of uh, certain communities um, out there, uh, either Malay or Indian or Chinese, they tend to use this olive oil, you know, they put some kind of oil in the ear, you know, just to, uh, some sort of a hygiene, those days hygiene, but I don't really suggest that because nowadays we don't know what type of oil is that. And, uh, you know, the oil is maybe contaminated and this mm. can cause a as well. Uh, other than that, uh, of course, the usage of earphone, uh, try yeah. to, to use more than 60 minutes, uh, maybe give it a rest about 20 minutes or perhaps 10 minutes, 
then uh, use the your phone again yeah okay. uh, then um, what else yeah, yeah roughly about that now your personal hygiene is very important so okay. uh, Okay, so then, we've got a question here from one of our viewers, Miss Cecilia Chong. Can swimming make an ear infection worse? Oh yes, of course. Um, now, ear infection, as I mentioned earlier, so when you swim, you don't know what type of water is there, either in the swimming pool or uh, whatever place that you are swimming. Uh, it yeah. could be a lot of bacteria inside that, and this can cause a lot of humidity retention over the ear. So yeah. this will actually uh, exaggerate more infection into the external ear. Sometimes the otitis externa is also called swimming ear. So those who you know, those who really go swimming and just come back, you'll get infection in the external ear. Uh, this is uh, also not, at, uh, I mean, can can actually cause uh, ear infection. But the one I told you, the one with the ear perforation, okay, mm -hmm. that one. Also, ear perforation are not allowed to uh, do swimming or diving until otherwise you some surgery uh, we call as meningoplasty, patching up the eardrum. So we, we, we really patch the eardrum and close it up then after that you can actually go for these type activities. But if you're really uh, you have a tray for swimming whatsoever, then you can actually use a earplug, swimming earplug. You know, they have a earplug, yeah. go for swimming but, but again this earplug if you go diving below it actually won't prevent uh, water. Water still can streak into the yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. okay. Right. That, that tends to happen in, in public pools, I suppose, all these infections. Um, okay, that's something to think about uh, using earplugs. And can a patient or um, ear infections travel? Um, the, the pressure, will that make the um, conditions worse? That's a very good question, actually. Um, yeah, as I mentioned earlier, the eustachian tube, uh, if there's a problem in the eustachian tube, they tend to have this... Um, acute superative otitis media, as I mentioned earlier, there's a pus in the medial ear. Now, those are imp infection, if you travel, especially you are going to, say, suppose, uh, Brijaya, you're going to First yeah. World, right? So these are high pressure areas. So when you're descending down your car, you're going to have very pain ear, very painful ears, yeah. right? Yeah. You're traveling overseas, but of course, now we cannot travel. Uh, we are on flight, especially when you descend, you're going to have a very severe pain in the ear because you, you, um, ears cannot equalize the pressure. So uh, yeah. that's one thing can happen. Uh, so I don't really advise those who have middle ear problems to travel uh, those th this type of high altitude uh, area or travel by flight. Yeah? But if you're having just external ear problem and all that, then no need to worry. Lah. That one actually you can actually travel. Okay. All right. So, thank you. Uh, I think that's all the time that we have for today. And we've covered quite a bit there, actually, Doctor. You've, you've uh, described the conditions um, and, you know, how to... Oh, sorry. I think we've not done treatments yet, have we? Uh, yeah, treatment. The last slide. Uh, yeah. In our center here, so we are actually have the options of uh, endoscopic-related surgeries. Yeah? Like, uh, okay. these, are, these are now a future... Uh, those days, what we do, uh, we do uh, not those days. Even now, if the disease is uh, is beyond the uh, middle ear, or perhaps it actually yeah. goes right as the mastoid, we do post auricular injection. Then we we'll do a lot of mastoid surgeries to okay. to view yeah. the uh, disease. Uh, but nowadays, uh, we do uh, endoscopic related surgery. Endoscopic is basically uh, we have a magnified view of the ear. Uh, yeah. A lot of endoscopic meningoplasties, uh, endoscopic, yeah. uh, uh, what do you call meningoplasties, patching of the eardrum. Uh, we yeah. also do endoscopic meningotomy grommet. That means if there is a fluid in the middle ear, so we want to remove the, so we do uh, surgery via endoscope mm -hmm. only. Right. Uh, and, and also uh, mastrectomy, we do ethical, the ethic diseases, you know, we can actually do mm -hmm. endoscopy, remove uh, disease uh, in the ethic region. So, um, uh, so just to say about the latest advancement uh, in this type of diseases. Okay. So, basically, the ethic colostoma, of course, if the disease is uh, severe enough, you still have to do a post surgery mm -hmm. and you have to uh, clear the diseases from the posterior part of the ear. Okay. Okay. So, I think that's the last slide. 
Thank you so very much, Doctor, again, uh, for your time. Because I know you're very busy, but you've actually uh, set aside some of your hours to be with us. So with that, we'd like to thank Dr. Puvan Arul Arumugam from Kulam Asia Hospital, Tebrau. He is a consultant uh, ENT surgeon. Um, and thank you all, viewers, for being with us today. So any, any words, Doctor, you want to say to the audience? Uh, well, as I said, uh, try to protect your ears. Uh, don't overuse your earphone. And if there's a slightest discharge, please uh, seek your opinion and not to jump too many doctors, you know, because yeah. they, as I mentioned, the automycosis, you know, they are going to give you so many ear drops uh, and so many antibiotics. This will cause resistance of the ear problems. So just uh, get a very uh, reliable doctor. Just uh, see him and uh, sort your problem out. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Wait, doctor, one one question just came in. Uh, would you be okay to to address this yeah, question? Yeah. No, right. Our friend is asking, what are the ways to protect ears for people who work in loud music, noise, sound environment? Uh -huh. I suppose. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. So. Uh, going on. Yeah. Very good. Uh, okay. Usually, it's the employer. Uh, if if your environment is loud, the employer will provide you uh, some kind of. Uh, device actually to uh, to cancel the voice uh, the noise away uh, that is the right way to work in such an environment so um, or you can actually get a ear plug uh, which you can get in most of the pharmacy don't don't reuse your ear plug just use once uh, and, uh, those this type of uh, what you call a swimming ear plug can be utilized as well so uh, but then you must understand uh, how loud is your area, you know? So sometimes, depending, if, if it is loud, your ears are exposed just a few minutes or a few, uh, just uh, one to two minutes, that, that wouldn't be a problem. But if it is exposed throughout, say, suppose you go to work at 8 o'clock, then you come back 5 o'clock, then it's exposed, uh, then you have to be worried on uh, that situation. Yeah. Then you have to get uh, ear plug uh, to continue to work. Employees, by right, they should provide uh, this type of um, uh, ear plugs that you can work. All right? Um, but then if you have ear problem or if you see there's some damages in your ear uh, where, you know, further exposure is going to make things worse, then you have to get do a hearing check and to see how is it. Sometimes uh, this type of noise exposure, a uh, patient will have tinnitus, a ringing sensation in the ear, uh, this might be yeah. problem lifelong sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we hope that we've answered your question just now for Noraida Ismail. And okay, now we really have to close the session. Thank you again, Dr. Puvan and uh, audience. If you would like to see Dr. Puvan for advice on um, ear diseases or you've got any ear pain going on, if you're in Johor especially, you can see him at Kulun Asia Hospital, the Brow. Okay, well, thank you everybody for being with us. See you all again soon. Bye. Bye, doctor. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.